I am looking at the ecology of shark populations in Winyaw Bay, South Carolina. Winyaw Bay is an hour south of um, school, an hour south of Conway in coastal Carolina. And we go fishing in Winyaw Bay and we do long lining trips to catch and release and tag sharks. When we go fishing in Winyaw Bay, um, we use one of three different boats provided by the university and we have captains provided by the university. We take undergraduates with us and we set out with all of our fishing gear, our bait, our safety gear, and various other things we may need. Um, and we set out to go fishing. We set long lines anywhere from four to six long lines a day. Average is probably five or six. Um, and we basically set those long lines for about 30 or 40 minutes. We then haul them. We take the animals off the long lines if we've caught any. We tag, measure, and release them without a hook. When we set a long line, we measure water quality parameters for both the bottom and top water because that will change depending on how much fresh or salt water is in the system. And we measure the temperature, dissolved oxygen, and salinity. And we also take down the depth that we're fishing at. And that way we can relate the shark's presence or absence to these water parameters. So we set the long line, we measure those parameters, um, we wait 30 to 40 minutes, and then we go and retrieve our long line, and we haul the long line from the water back into the boat, and we will take off the hooks as we go along, and if there's an animal on the hook, we will work as fast as possible. We'll get the animal on board if it's small enough to bring on board. We will take the hook out. We will do three measurements if it's a shark, pre-caudal length, fork length, and total length, and we will tag the animal. We may write down any interesting notes we find if the animal's injured or has some peculiar growth or parasites, something like that, and then we'll release the animal. It's very important that we do this in a timely manner um, because this is tag and release, so we want these animals to be as healthy as possible and as least stressed as possible. And that's also one of the reasons we fish our long lines for so such short times. Um, a lot of commercial fishermen or fishermen out there who use long lines in order to catch animals to eat will soak them for up to days at a time. And we really want our animals to survive, so we only soak them to 30 to 40 minutes. The whole tagging and measuring procedure ideally happens in one to two minutes and that animal's on his way. Right before we release the animal, we will also swim the animal a bit um, in the water to make sure that it still has oxygen going over its gills, its blood is flowing, and it has its muscles moving and it's ready to swim off. So it has the best chance of survival. So studying sharks and further understanding where they go, why they go to those places, how old are they when they go there, Questions like that can help us further understand and protect these species that are crucial to maintain these healthy oceans, which so many people, if not everyone in the world, relies on. My research is important to Winya Bay for a couple different reasons. The shark populations in Winya Bay have been rarely studied. Uh, we have discovered that Winya Bay is an important habitat for up to 12 different species of sharks and these species are actually coastal migratory species. And more specifically, Winya Bay is a possible nursery for sharks, meaning that juvenile sharks or newborn sharks will inhabit Winya Bay in order to feed and take refuge from larger predators. And this bay then gives them the chance to grow and mature and add to these populations and potentially help shark populations in the U.S. Atlantic coast.